As a special video for Thanksgiving, this will be a relatively short one. The story of the Mayflower carrying the pilgrims has been covered in great depth by greater historians than I, so I will not attempt to cover that in such a short form video. While I can certainly do a longer video on the topic later, that will not be the purpose of this one. In keeping with the general content of the channel, this will be talking more about the Mayflower as a ship than about the men and women she carried. So. With that out of the way, the Mayflower was a pretty generic ship for her time. A Dutch cargo fleet? Probably butchered that. She was one of many ships of the type, plying Dutch and English trade across the Atlantic and English Channel. As such, she was a pretty easy ship to charter for people like the Pilgrims, who just needed something to get them across the Atlantic, not anything special. In that role, Mayflower was perfectly suitable around 100 feet long with a beam of 25 feet and displacing around 180 tons. Details are understandably vague for a ship that was nothing special aside from this one voyage. Mayflower wasn't particularly large or fast. Details are similarly fuzzy on when exactly she was built or even where she was built, with the general assumption being around 1608, 1609 in Harwich, England. While her design is of Dutch origin, Mayflower is almost certainly an English-built ship. Designed to make cargo runs, she was most assuredly not designed for, nor intended as, a passenger ship. Her three decks were not exactly the most comfortable for habitability, even in the ostensible crew spaces. Certainly not in the vein of later transatlantic ocean liners. With a crew of around 30, Mayflower would spend a good decade or so plying her trade, before being chartered by the Pilgrims, who would have been called differently at the time, for their voyage. Contrary to popular belief, this was not actually directed to the north of the existing English colonies. Mayflower had been intended to land in Virginia Colony, though the actual landing site would have been in modern New York, though rough weather ended up diverting her to her eventual landing at what would become Plymouth. When the ship was chartered, she had her cargo hold filled with supplies for the colonists, while her gun deck would be turned into impromptu quarters for those traveling aboard her. This space was not comfortable for that, being only about 70 feet in all, once one took the guns and gunpowder storage into account. The gun deck had a roof only about 5 feet high, with no private rooms nor latrines, as it was never intended to carry passengers. It was, after all, a gun deck, a place to fight the ship. Had Mayflower been forced into a gunnery duel with pirates or something, one shudders to imagine the results on the cramped passengers. On that topic, Mayflower would have carried between 10 to 12 guns, all relatively small weapons, that would have been on the gun deck or the stern for close-in defense. Four of these weapons would be taken off to fortify the colony upon arrival there. She was no more a warship than a passenger liner, and those weapons were entirely for self-defense and warding off pirates. As for the voyage itself, Mayflower carried 102 passengers crammed onto her gun deck between September 6th and November 11th, 1620. The original intention had been to return to England in short order, however the same diseases that so decimated the colonists also hit the crew. As a result, Mayflower remained through the winter of 1620-21 in New Plymouth's harbor. During this, the ship would have been used once more as impromptu housing at times, while the crew slowly recovered. Many never did. Records indicate that, by the time Mayflower's surviving crew was fit to sail her back, over a dozen of them had perished. With a crew of only 30 or so to begin with, that was not a small loss. Nonetheless, the ship would sail back to England and continue her old trade duties for a couple years, before her captain and owner died in 1622. She would then sit in port, slowly rotting, for two years before being broken up in 1624, with legends saying that some of her timbers were saved to build a barn, though this is disputed to say the least. Regardless, Mayflower was a common cargo ship that has, through reasons entirely unrelated to anything special about the ship, entered into legend. No child in America doesn't know the name Mayflower if they are fortunate enough to go to school. The ship will never be forgotten so long as Thanksgiving is celebrated. I sincerely doubt any of her crew could have expected that when they were chartered to take some weird religious exiles across the Atlantic 400 years ago. On a related note, there is a replica of the Mayflower you can visit today 
which is as close to accurate as we will probably ever get, considering the sheer length of time since Mayflower was built and the incomplete records about her.